What's going on everyone? Moose here, Air Guns of Michigan, and today I want to talk about something that I probably am going to start releasing a video twice a year on, and that is cleaning and maintaining your air guns for proper functionality. It's something that I hear all kinds of horror stories on. I hear people that talk about uh, they never clean their air guns. They're, it's absolutely ridiculous to clean an air gun. I hear other people that um, that say um, they use REM oil on their air guns. I hear people saying that they use um, firearm rods with brass bristles to clean their air guns. And I'm here to tell you, please don't do any of those things. <laughs> So we're going to talk a little bit about the things that I use on my air guns uh, on a daily basis, um, or at least often. Uh, number one is Ballastol, uh, whether it's in the uh, just the can or the aerosol, and there is a purpose for each one of these, and I'm going to share that with you, uh, at least from, from what I do. Um, but we're going to talk about, this is my new caliber gun, Cricut 2. Um, it has been shot, um, but I didn't really clean the barrel or anything because I was waiting to do this video. Um, I started to do this video and my GoPro died. So I want to show you the first two pad, or plugs that I pulled out, or the felt pads. It's right over there and show you. And as a matter of fact, you know what? I'm going to come around here and show you just how dirty these, oops, I dropped on. Uh, just how dirty these felt pads were bringing them through this air gun. So you can see kind of right there. Let's see here. Get that focus right there. You see how dirty those are? Um, and then we're going to talk a little bit about the uh, stuff also that I use to clean my air gun. Uh, patchworm. If you don't have a patchworm kit, highly recommend picking one up. They're available through high pressure pneumatics. Uh, you know, the, you can look in the description and see the website there. Um, you know, so um, I have a couple of different kits. Uh, this is the multi-caliber kit. It does everything from 20 cal up to 12 gauge. Um, and then this is the 22 caliber specific kit that I have open already and I'm using. Um, you're gonna want some felt um, plugs to pull through your bore, or you can certainly use patches. Seven eighths patches are good for 22 caliber. Um, having a, a soft rag, I like to use old t-shirts. Um, Super lube, uh, synthetic oil, um, and this is the same thing. This is silicone oil. Um, Super lube is what I use. It is. Um, it's food grade, it's, so it's really clean, but um, high pressure pneumatic sells these um, these little tubes and they got this little dropper on the end so you can get really precise and we'll show you why uh, when we get on with this. So uh, part of the 22 caliber kit is you'll get a, a little um, case full of the felt pads and you'll get some of the regular patches. Um, what I do is I put ballastol right into these felt patches. And the reason that we do that is so that they are pre-soaked and I can pull them through my bore. So we'll go ahead and grab our patchworm and put a um, patchworm felt plug in there that's pre-soaked in ballastol. We're going to make sure the gun is not loaded, uh, safety is engaged, and we are going to open up the breech all the way. Now, if you have a removable suppressor, now is the time to do that, so that you are just exposing the end of your barrel. If you're, you cannot or you don't feel comfortable um, removing that, you can certainly use a straw in the end uh, there's videos out there on how to do that, or we can go over it. But um, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and send this from the breech. Sorry, it's hard to see from this angle. From the breech end to the end of the barrel. Now, I heard a story the other day about somebody who said that they pull theirs from the tip of the barrel backwards in an air gun. 
Please don't do that. And let me explain why. Because I want to show you all the gook that is going to come out of the end of this barrel when we're pulling from the breech side down, dragging it through the rifling. Look how dirty that is. Right? You don't want that dirt and whatever else is going on to fall back down into your breech or your transfer port, more importantly. Why, you say? Well, because why would you want to put dirt down your breech or your transfer port and have your gun start malfunctioning, acting up, uh, not functioning, um, or other bad juju things? Um, once I've pulled the patch, now I've pulled a couple. I started this video, I had to restart the video um, because uh, it died. Um, so I've already got a few clean ones still here. Normally I like to let it sit for just a couple of minutes and let the ballast all uh, kind of just soak in and loosen all the dirt and grime up. But once we've done that, now keep in mind, this is a new gun. It's really the first time that the barrel's been cleaned. Um, so, you know, we've got, um, we've got some, you know, some real good gunk in there that we got to pull out of there. So, oh, there we go. Oh yeah. She's pulling dirty. She's pulling real dirty. Just look Okay. how dirty that is. Right. And this is the seven new air gun. Right. So for those of you that don't think you need to clean your barrel, there's proof you do. And that's like that in all air guns. Don't care what air gun you have, it's going to be dirty. And if it's not, then chances are somebody already owned that air gun and cleaned the barrel. I've never had an air gun not pull dirty um, straight out of the box. So getting a little bit cleaner, but still dirty. We want to try to remove as much of that uh, harmful fouling stuff as we can and then you know another question that I get asked all the time is moose how often do you clean your barrels well every gun is a little bit different um, I generally will clean my barrel when my point of impact starts to change or my groups are opening up and it's obvious that the gun is not shooting as accurately as it once did on a clean barrel it may take a little bit of break-in period um, but generally speaking, I try to set my groupings from a clean bore. So, um, you see it's getting even lighter. Now, we could sit and do this for a couple more minutes and get this super clean. I'm not going to go that far just because, well, let's face it, you guys want to see the rest of the video. So, now that we've done that, we can go ahead and release our... our uh, bolt there. We're going to go ahead and put our moderator back onto the air gun. Snug it down. And I'm going to go over a few other preventative as well as I guess ultra preventative. Right? Not a lot of people talk about this stuff. So let's talk about this. If you have a PCP air gun and now the rest of this is, or this next part is going to be PCP specific. If you have a PCP air gun, you will notice that over time, your gun may leak a little bit. Okay. Um, if it in fact does leak air, then we can do a few things to help prevent or reseal the gun. On this one, it's a little difficult because it takes a pellet probe, but on a, let's see here, what do we got laying around here? Something easy. Um, all right. So on a PCP with a fill port, right? Like a regular fill port, preventatively, I do this once maybe every maybe every four or five fills. You can take silicone oil and just place two drops, two, 
I didn't say three or five or ten. I said two. Two drops of silicone oil into this port right before you fill it with your tank. What that will do is push that silicon oil inside of the action of the gun. Keep in mind, silicon oil only. I don't mean aerosol spray silicone. I mean super lube, multi-use silicon uh, oil. This is basically food grade, clean, and is not going to explode because there's nothing other than silicon in it. But what's going to happen is, is that when we fill that um, with our air, it's going to force the silicon into the inner workings of the gun and re-lubricating all of our, um, all of our um, internal O-rings, uh, internal mechanisms, and it can help to seal some leaks. Not all, some leaks are outside of that, but it's it's a good preventative thing anyway, uh, because if there's ever any kind of moisture or anything like that inside of your air source, um, you know, that's gonna also help lubricate everything, keep it coated so that it doesn't rust on the inside. So a uh, very important thing. If you have a fill probe, what I do is, before I attach my fill probe to my tank or my air source, is I hold my fill port in my hand, I put the two drops inside of that, connect it to my air source, plug it into my gun, and then blow it with the air into the gun. So, but, like I said, no more than two. Uh, you know, I mean, I, it's up to you. Listen, it's your gun, but I can just tell you what I like to do. Now, um, next step in preventative maintenance is <clears throat> I have um, actually found... I've actually had my guns um, develop surface rust, and it can happen, all right? Um, so what I like to do is I like to take my can of Ballastol, my aerosol, and this stuff is safe for everything, guys. Firearms, leather, knives, tools, locks, marine. It's skin safe. Uh, some people say it smells really bad, but whatever. Um, doesn't hurt any of the synthetics that I have, uh, the wood stocks, nothing like that. I've never, ever had an adverse reaction to this. Now, use it your own risk either way. This is just what I do. But I will take this now that this gun is, is um, you know, relatively ready to go. And I'm just going to frost a light coating on this. And I'm going to take my rag and I'm just going to wipe the entire gun down. I've put it on to the... Um, to the stock. I put it into all of the working areas, you know, just kind of give it a light, light coat to uh, help protect the metal and uh, the gun and the internals because it'll get down in there um, from any kind of moisture. It's safe for your scopes. Don't spray it on your optical lenses because you're going to hate yourself because it, well, it's going to, it's going to, uh, you know, be greasy and foggy and nappy and ugly and you're going to be really upset and you know all that but so i just go through and i just wipe my gun down you know i do this with my firearms too especially if they're going to be in their case for an extended amount of time um you know along with a good um you know um A good dehumidifier pack in there um, you know stuff like that so that is how I like to treat the guns right off the rip as soon as I get them um, now I know that there's at least a nice coat of a light oil you know which is the Ballastol uh, multi-purpose um, once again this stuff is um, you know not not going to damage anything at least it hasn't for me i put it on wood stocks i put it on no. synthetic stocks i put it on rubberized stocks i i've l literally used this stuff on every air gun that i own and i've never had any problem whatsoever so with that being said um hopefully that answers some of your questions now with the silicone oil also another thing that um, some people like to do is to take their their um bolt 
open it up and just put like a drop just a drop there you go onto that bolt just kind of work it it'll just keep it lubricated now i want to say something because i already know what some of you are thinking holy hell moose what in the heck are you doing dude because that grease is going to pick up dirt it's going to pick up all kinds of stuff it's going to it's going to cake on there it's going to be nasty listen i don't disagree but proper air care and proper or proper air gun care is something that i care greatly about my guns don't get thrown onto the ground if they get dirty if i'm out in the woods i take them apart and clean them appropriately just like my my regular firearms you know every time i shoot my ars they get cleaned every single time right i take the bolt apart i take the firing pin out everything it's important um same thing goes for air guns guys you know these things you know i'm not saying that you gotta you know clean this thing every single time that you shoot it but let me tell you something if you want this thing to last a long time take care of it like you want it to last a long time cleaning your bore with the ballistol even if you don't think that you have to, it's going to lightly lubricate that, keep it rust free, keep debris from building up and making it nasty. So hopefully that answered some questions. If you guys have other questions, please drop them in the comments below. We'll get to that. I'm going to be doing another video that I have lined up on some other stuff, um, similar to what we're doing here, but I think you guys are really going to dig it. So till next time, I'm Moose. This is Air Guns in Michigan. Be good to each other and God bless.